All right, this will most likely be the start of part three, I guess it's going to be, which is kind of the uh, measuring process. Uh, we're just measuring the crank up, and uh, I've got my digital micrometer, yeah. and we've got the standard. I have my digital. I use my <laughs> digits to Because I can't do numbers, <laughs> so we're seeing if I'm accurate as far as what his is yeah. actually showing. So, so that's, uh, I'm showing 2.47875. No, that's actually very, very close. Um, 2.47758. So 2.4788. Yeah, so I'm 2.47875. Oh, wow, this goes to yeah. the hundreds <laughs> of yeah. thousands? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you're, we're 500. Five hundred thousands. <laughs> I don't know. So close enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to continue on with my uh, digital one here, and maybe if I find something weird, we'll check it. But uh, okay. all right. So Lynn's going to be the the bookkeeper on this one. So all right, here I go. I'm not going to keep you on board for this, but we'll uh, maybe show you the measurements at the end of the measurement process. All right, it's another day, and uh, we're back here playing around with the crank. And we did complete the measurements the other day, and I've got the uh, engine master here <laughs> to just talk about the what we found as far as dimensions were concerned. So I'll just uh, give you a quick shot of this. And you want to give him a quick explanation? So in the beginning on the main bearings David was measuring here and I was writing down so he took lots of measurements which is good on each pin so he took four different measurements but we took in consideration the smallest one because that's our guide from we can't make it bigger than the smaller measurement right so these are for the three pins these are the measurements which correspond to uh, four ten thousands, three ten thousand, and nine ten thousand. So nine ten thousands is almost a tau, like zero point nine tau. And same for the crank pins. Here I measured, and he rolled down. So I did. We didn't write down all the measurements that we took. We took more than one per uh, crank pin, but we wrote down only the smallest one. Right. And his uh, electronic digital uh, micrometer. <laughs> goes to five digits after the comma so that's a uh, hundred tau so don't pay attention to the last the fifth number so we have uh, these are the differences so this is one tau smaller than the spec this is 0 0.8 0 0.9 and 0 0.8 smaller than the spec so his crankshaft is worn less than one tau the maximum wear is one tau and i was just telling him that uh, it is not unsafe, you can continue driving like that for another tau, because for me, up to two tau, it is uh, the wear limit. I don't know where I wrote it, where I, where I read it or whatever, but for me, up to two tau is not unsafe to drive, but it's not worth putting it back together yeah. when it is halfway through its There, there was a couple of people already commented on my video about uh, wanting the cost of this engine rebuild, and I'm kind of thinking to myself, well, Technically, there are things you could probably shortcut and some guys might actually just polish this a little bit and yeah. put it back in versus getting it cut. So, but I'm on the sort of the side that while I have it out, I may as well get it done properly yeah. and then yeah. we won't have to touch this engine hopefully for another 10 to 15 years. Exactly. I don't know how long this went obviously before it was even, obviously this has probably never been touched anyway since it's the original bearing. So yeah. this lasted probably over 100,000 miles, but. Yeah, it's actually preserved pretty well. Anyway, so the crank's in pretty good shape, like we'd mentioned. Um, I think we are going to get send it out to have it cut uh, one size under, so 10 under. And uh, we'll get new bearings for it and get ready to put that back in the car once we get it back from the shop. So there's the update on the crank. Let's move on to something else. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the liners out. And normally all I do for that or what we've done in the past is we just grab a piece of uh, two by four, a wood block and a heavy hammer and just uh, sort of hit it on the edge of the, we're not gonna be using these liners anyway, so 
But anyway, we're just going to hit it here on the edges and see if we can knock these out. We've had some that come out very easily yeah. and some that have been very stubborn. So we'll see how we do as far I'm as these are concerned. I'm going to be optimistic and I'm just going to use the back of this okay. hammer, which is aluminum. Okay. And we'll do you want me to see. catch that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think it's moving. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. These ones don't look like they're going to be too bad. So some of them come out as I'm pushing down the on the pistons. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can see lots of rust coming out. All right. So we'll uh, continue to push these out, and uh, like I said, we'll take a quick look at them once we get them out. But they actually look fairly glazed but i don't even think the number one cylinder really has any scoring in from that broken yeah. piston ring which yeah. is kind of unusual but so these potentially could be used i guess if you just uh, break the glaze but anyway we'll get them we'll get them out the rest of the way okay catch that. hang on <laughs> gotta put my catcher's mitt on all right Okay, well, the second one's coming too. <laughs> oh, hit the second one a little bit. There you go. Nice jugs. Beautiful <laughs> baby boy. <laughs> so the second one was pulled by the gasket. Yeah, That's by the figure eight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Could you even see that? Probably not. No, you didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, let's do this one. I was probably in the way and I wasn't focused there anyway. Okay, let it rip. All right, just a little uh, quick video. If some of you have never seen the uh, the figure eight gaskets, which are the gaskets that seal the liners to the bottom of the block, uh, so they come in either copper or steel. So here is the figure eight gasket that goes between the two cylinder liners into the block. So just thought I'd give you a quick shot of that so you could see that. I've actually ordered both steel and copper ones uh, because there is a liner protrusion uh, spec that you need to meet and sometimes the thickness of the liners can make all of the difference so we've got a couple of different liner sets just in case all right let's flip the block over and have a look and see how crusty it is inside all right we'll give you a quick look of inside the block once the uh, liners are removed and actually it looks pretty darn good as far as i'm concerned um, there's always usually quite a bit of debris here at the rear and you can see a bit of rust and scale build up on the inside here. So we've got a kind of a plan to attack this and we'll show you that at a later date. We're not gonna be doing an internal, well, I'll probably do just a quick cleaning on the inside, but we wanna get all this rust and scale or most of this rust and scale removed as possible. And we'll come up with a process to do that. So that's what that looks like, if you're interested. And there's a few things you need to take back off this block we need to take out the oil gallery plugs. We need to take out this bushing in here. Uh, we need to probably remove all the studs. We need, we need to remove the cam bearings. So cam bearings are hauled in here by these uh, keepers here. There's one there and uh, one somewhere else. So we'll remove those. Actually, the cam bearing keepers are here, sorry. Here, here. So we'll remove those at some point and pull the cam bearings out. Helen's got a tool for that, which is good. So, all right, on to the next thing. All right, we're just in the uh, process of cleaning the table up a little bit and getting things put away in this bin over here. I'm keeping out parts that I need to uh, clean and paint, parts that we're going to reuse over here. But in the meantime, I'm going to disconnect or remove the connecting rods from the pistons. 
So we'll just do that now. As I mentioned, I've got a new uh, piston and liner kit, so we only need the rods. So uh, we'll do that now, get those put away, and then we'll go after probably taking the springs off and the valves out of the head, and maybe removing the studs, and get that cleaned up a little bit. All I know is this guy's making a lot of noise over here. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the block's looking pretty clean. Or cle cleaner than it was. So we'll still do a little bit of sanding on it before we uh, paint it. But yeah, it's come up pretty good, a little rusty. So now that's done. Now we're gonna go after removing the uh, oil gallery plugs here which is a 11 16 wrench, which is, as I mentioned, to a lens much nicer than the TR6, which has the small, smaller plugs, hex-headed plugs. And then we're going to go after the cam um, bearing keepers, which are here, and those are 7 16 sockets. So go ahead and we'll remove those now. All right, we're on to the cam bearing uh, uninstallation, yeah. deinstallation, <laughs> removal. Removal. Learn so English, yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting for the Bulgarian guy. Uh, we just punched out the uh, cam plug on the rear. We just used the tool to punch it out from back here. So we got an open hole now to that rear bearing. So throw her in there. So it's got a little rubber thing here goes into the bearing we don't know if we need to actually expand it to get the bearings no, out but anyway don't really need it now tighten it down till it expands the rubber piece out and then you got a big bfh here you want to do sure get one out Okay, I'll do the others. All right, the last thing we're gonna do for today is we're gonna push the valve guides out. So we've got the uh, head up on the press here and I'll just put you on time-lapse and you can watch me push these valve guides out. 